Male reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists of the following primary anatomical structures. The testis, the ductus deferens, our seminal vesicles, the urethra, the prostate gland, bubble urethral glands, and the penis. Let's start first by uh, discussing the testis. The testis um, is responsible for sperm development. And as a result, it is the primary sex organ for males um, because it's what makes uh, spermatogonia. Now, in this mid-sagittal section of the male pelvis and perineum, the testis is shown in yellow. And the yellow, uh, we take a little section of that. There's a light micrograph if we were to go in hundreds of times of magnification and take a stain. We got these structures here, tons of them that are called seminiferous tubules. And in those seminiferous tubules, we see in the periphery these very primitive forming. And I say primitive because they're early in the development of sperm. And as they move towards the central lumen of these seminiferous tubules, they become mature sperm or spermatogonia. If we take a little illustration of those spermatogonia there before they go into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules, the sperm have the following components. A head, and that's what's housing the haploid amount of DNA, 23 chromosomes, and the 23rd chromosome is either X or a Y, giving rise to other male or female uh, progeny. Um, the neck is what houses the uh, high concentration of mitochondria that's going to take fructose and turn it into uh, ATP for propelling the flagellum or tail that's going to be propelling these sperm during ejaculation. The temperature necessary for sperm to be development is 3 degrees below body temperature in centigrade. So 37 degrees centigrade is body temperature. So about 34 degrees centigrade is what's necessary for sperm to be developed. This is why the testis in males hang outside the body within the scrotal sac and they're not contained within. And why the uh, those muscles, like the cremasteric muscle that surrounds, will pull the testis closer to the body or relax to go farther away to either increase temperature or get away so to make sure to keep temperature lower. So the testes have the following vascular supply, the gonadal arteries. The picture at the top shows a, a picture of the abdominal aorta, and the picture at the bottom shows an anterior view of the penis with the penis erect. The right gonadal artery courses down in this illustration, and as soon as it hits that area, again, right there, it goes to the deep inguinal ring, through the inguinal canal, and into the spermatic cord. That left gonadal artery that's showing a step dissection on the other side hits that deep inguinal ring, courses through that inguinal canal, and down in the spermatic cord, and provides arterial supply to these testes. The veins are not bilateral. That's why I'm going to do these separate. The right gonadal vein, it's going to then take blood from that right testis and directly up into the inferior vena cava. The, there's the IVC. The left gonadal vein is going to draw blood away from that left uh, testis up all the way and in, into the left renal vein, which then empties into the inferior vena cava. So the right gonadal vein and left gonadal vein both drain their associated gonads. Right goes up to the IVC, left goes up to the left renal vein, and then into the IVC. Uh, the ductus deferens is next. It's what used to be called the vas deferens. So ductus deferens or vas deferens. Vas means vessel, and this isn't a vessel. Early, early, early anatomists thought it was, and that term has stuck, and hence the name vasectomy, to cut the ductus deferens or the vas deferens uh, as a form of birth control. Um, the word vas is just not right. So ductus deferens is the one that we use, though many docs will use vas as you go in your career. Uh, the course of these vas deferens comes from the epididymis, which is the structure that houses developing sperm over top of the testis, and then it's going to course all the way up the spermatic cord, up into the inguinal canal, and then all the way to the back of the bladder. So the function of these seminal, uh, and then into this and then join also with the seminal vesicle. So this ductus deferens, let me just finish with this, that course as we all along, its function is to then transport sperm during emission and ejaculation. I'll talk about the difference between those soon. But to basically uh, bring those sperm in getting ready for ejaculation uh, out during intercourse. Now the function of these seminal vesicles, or these paired glands on the back of the bladder, 
um, is a couple of them. They, they, these glands produce like a viscous secretion that contains fructose to give energy to the uh, sperm um, and prostaglandins, fibrinogen, and uh, fibrinogen, pardon me, and as well as some other enzymes and proteins. And these semen, they're going to give contribution to semen, the second component. Um, and a lot, of, a good majority of the ejaculate comprised uh, is from this seminal vesicle. And it's going to give nutrients for the sperm and also uh, helping with decreasing the acidity of the vagina because sperm need a more alkaline environment. So seminal vesicles produce an alkaline secretion and also helps so the sperm don't coagulate. Here's a posterior view of the bladder. And so there's this ductus deferens coming all the way up. And there is the seminal vesicle. Notice that it's paired on either side. Um, and then the seminal vesicle and the ductus deferens are going to come together and form in green there what's called the ejaculatory duct. It's what's taking seminal vesicle secretions and sperm coming in from the ductus deferens and bring them down through this ejaculatory duct paired on either side into the urethra. Now the urethra uh, has the following functions. It's two of them. One is to avoid the bladder. So there's urine inside the bladder. Urine comes all the way down and then the urethra takes the urine out the penis and into a toilet or tree or whatever. Now, the second function of the urethra is a pathway for semen. So there's semen coming down the ejaculatory duct and then the urethra takes it out. So there's two, so in the male reproductive system, both um, urine and semen share the same pathway. And this is why at the top uh, or the bottom of the bladder, at the top of the prostate gland, there's a sphincter that contracts. So when semen are coming through, it ensures that semen is not mixed with urine. There are three different regions to the urethra. First, the spongy, uh, pardon me, prosthetic urethra, because that's the part that's surrounded by the prostate gland. Second is the membranous urethra, which is there in the urogenital diaphragm. And finally, the spongy urethra, which is in the spongy erectile tissue of the penis, also known as the penile urethra. The prostate gland is what surrounds the prosthetic urethra. And so its function, it's this dense organ that surrounds uh, the urethra. It's right below the bladder. It's about it's just two by three by three centimeters in size, and it's got a bunch of these uh, tubule alveolar glands and this dense connective tissue around the outside and these different layers. And so what happens is these this prostate gland is going to uh, produce this fluid or prosthetic fluid that has glycoproteins and other enzymes and and uh, in this fluid, it's for the expul it, during expulsion and ejaculation to help the give motility to sperm. Um, it also there's enzymes if there's um, a cancerous, other benign or uh, malignant cancerous uh, components to prostate. They secrete this gland secrete a prostate specific antigen known as PSA into the blood, and by by uh, measuring these levels of PSA, you're able to help give. Uh, it's used to diagnose and monitor prostate cancer. Uh, it also, a, a very easy way, because it's a digital rectal exam, you'll notice how close that prostate gland is to the rectum. And so by inserting uh, a finger up into the anus and rectum, you can touch the back of the bladder, uh, pro the back of the prostate gland. And if it's really large, you'll, uh, the, the physician or PA will be able to feel that prostate gland protruding into the rectum. The bulbal urethral gland shown there in yellow, um, it's found in the urogenital diaphragm of the males and it's paired and its function is to, is to secrete, um, it's also known as the Cowper's gland. This is what an eponym many people use. It's in the UG diaphragm and it empties its contents into the penile urethra. Um, this is, and it happens during an erection uh, so that these glands have, uh, it secretes the inside of the lining of the urethra with a lubrication that helps with reducing friction. So during ejaculation, think of it kind of like sliding down a slide that's dry, now putting water on it, and then sliding down, you get far more uh, velocity. And so it coats the inside lining of the urethra to increase velocity during ejaculation and also helps um, neutralize the acidity of some droplets of urine that may still be there. In this posterior view, we see those two paired bulbourethral glands within the UG diaphragm.
there it is. Uh, and then during ejaculation, it coats the inside of the urethra, pardon me, there uh, for ejaculation. So here we have now the penis, the main copulatory organ of the male reproductive system. And there's the body or shaft of the penis. It's got a, 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 a legs and body that are found right within the uh, ischio uh, pubic ramus of the uh, pelvis. And then the main shaft that uh, hangs off the front of the pubic bone. The glans penis, or the head of the penis, is at the very tip. It has the highest concentration of sensory organs, of sensory neurons, which brings the pleasure associated with intercourse. The corpora cavernosum, pardon me, corpora cavernosa, it's paired, is erectile tissue found within the shaft and body of the penis. This is like a sponge that fills up with blood that enables the penis to become erect for insertion in the vagina during intercourse. In this coronal section through the penis, we see this paired corpora cavernosa all the way down. And on the one side, you can see the central artery that's going to leak blood into this erectile or spongy tissue to help the penis become erect. Um, and then we also, and then in this other step dissection, we see these paired corpora cavernosa that flank on the dorsal surface of the penis to either side of the urethra. The corpus spongiosum is the erectile tissue that surrounds the urethra and is found in the head of the penis. And so in this coronal section, there we have that corpus uh, spongiosum that is also erectile tissue when it expands. It helps keep the lumen of the urethra as open and patent as possible. Um, and in this uh, step to section, there's the corpus spongiosum and that tube in the middle is the urethra. Um, now, semen, just to, to overview, semen is a collection of all the contribution. Uh, uh, semen is the end product of each of these four contributors. So, for example, from the testis, that's what gives us the sperm that we find in the semen. We have the seminal vesicles. That's where we're going to get that, uh, the prostaglandins and the fructose and the uh, alkaline secretions to contribute to semen. A good measure, about 60 to 70% of the contributions of semen come from this. Prostate gland has those enzymes and glycoproteins that are going to give like 30% of the contributions. The bubble urethral glands line the inside is a very small percentage. Only a few percentage of the concentration of the semen comes from the bubble urethral gland. But those are all the structures that contribute to semen which exits the penis during ejaculation.